And this is Marilyn Kimmerling and Lucas Barfield for Radio Tacoma. Yeah, CannaCon is a national cannabis expo that travels around the country, and it's just here to showcase the latest and greatest in the cannabis industry as far as seeds, fertilizers, and there's even security company and companies and insurance companies here today. So we're going to go around and see what's really going on in the cannabis industry as far as um, making the money. And if you've ever been to an expo at the convention center, you know that there's a lot of space. And boy, are there a lot of exhibitors. We got a program and we went down the list to see who we would like to interview. And it took us quite some time. So we're going to do the best we can in the time we've got finding companies to talk to and learn and share with you. We're about to get started. First and foremost, we're a custom packaging um, solution. So we help design, we have in-house design and design packaging for our consumers in the cannabis CBD industry. Um, and then we're also an ex- uh, one of four distributors for C-Cell vape technology. So we sell the vape hardware, the batteries, and the carts as well on that piece of it. I'm just excited to see some of our customers here in Tacoma and then see who else is out there that needs information. We're local. We're based out of Everett, Washington. Cartridges and pod systems um, from uh, C-Cell that has actually you know, probably been in the market for a little bit and then some of the newer um, things that are going to be released this year. So we would be selling, we sell a lot of the batteries uh, straight to like the retailers or like the head shops um, and then the cartridges and pod systems straight to the uh, extractors and producer processing across the country. C-A-N-N-A brand. Uh, solutions.com. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm with Testing Technologies. We are very excited about the potential of pesticide testing being a state requirement for the safety of consumers. So that's what we're gearing up for. And we're hoping to see that come soon, sooner rather than later. But we're very excited for the potential of pesticide testing for the safety of consumers on the horizon. We are located in Palsbo. My name is Randy. I'm with Dauntless. We, uh, we deliver traceability here in the state of Washington and across the country. Traceability is a term used for um, tracking uh, inventory, usually, uh, from entity to entity, from point to point, and uh, so that you can determine you know, whether or not it all made it. Uh, so really, the, the traceability, the ultimate goal is the consumer, right? The consumer is the one that is in control of the pocketbook, and they're deciding what to buy. That's going through the retailers, and then the retailers are stocking what the consumers want. Right? There's all these, the, the, all the stores are learning all these things. Well, meanwhile, traceability is failing, and it's getting in the way of the businesses optimizing their operations. Uh, they're spending too much time uh, making sure that you know the traceability is right when it's actually failing um, underneath, and the data is not correct. Um, it's very difficult to work with. Uh, the integrations are overwhelming and uh, break all the time because of the weaknesses of the central system. But we strengthen that. We, we deliver traceability right into the business. So they have their own database and their own traceability information so that they can uh, provide their own reports if they need to. My name is Jared. I'm the Pacific Northwest Account Executive at Dutchie. Um, and we are an e-commerce tool. We focus on um, online ordering for cannabis retailers and medical dispensaries. Um, two big things that we really do there is, is help out with menu automation so that shop doesn't have to spend so much time updating their menus and also being an extra engine for revenue with, through online ordering for pickup. Um, working with about 25% of the uh, dispensaries in the nation currently and we're really excited with 2020 is going to bring. My name is Austin Driscoll with Happy Tree Microbes. We make a formula called Bioharmonic Tonic to help your plants reach their full genetic potential, increase their terpene content, and your yield. This is a a new and unique uh, formulation of microbes, very different than a lot of the other stuff that's out. It's a very broad spectrum inoculant biostimulant. It's got Amazon Botanicals added in it, which is one of the unique things. There's Camu Camu, Muraplama, and Maca in there, as well as some gemstones that add a piezoelectric effect to the water and allow the microbes to have a potentially enhanced communication network. HappyTreeMicrobes.com. Hi, I'm Sterling Blake with Jupiter Research. We are located in Phoenix, Arizona, and we speci- we are a wholesale distributor for C-Cell Technology. So we work exclusively selling mouthpieces, cartridges, power supplies. JupiterResearch.com. We've been coming to Canacon. I think this is our fourth or fifth year. We love Canacon. Consumers can find us in dispensaries, so we don't touch any of the plant. 
we are just strictly hardware. So we sell to cultivators, extractors, uh, growers. I'm Kristen Baldwin. I'm the executive director of the Cannabis Alliance. We're the largest trade organization in the state of Washington for cannabis. It's a very low-cost organization to join, and as Lucas will tell you, we're very effective legislatively. We keep you updated with regulations. We help you with the LCB. We provide best practices. We're working on an education committee. Um, We are the community around cannabis. The Cannabis Alliance.us. We have a lot of work to do. We're in Cannabis 2.0 and we're in emerging, we're emerging and, and flowering. There you go. I'm new to the industry. I came from the outside in and I'm really excited to be here because it is amazing to watch an industry bloom. My name is Forrest. You can find us at futurallusa.com. Basically, we sell a, a knockbox, and what that is, is uh, it's a cone filling device. It's for making pre rolled cones. You can make about 6,000 joints in a day on one machine. We make all of our cones special fit to, uh, to fit the dimensions of the machine so you don't get any spillage. Um, it just makes a beautiful uh, joint. We also offer um, blunt, blunt papers, which are made out of tea leaves, and they're non-tobacco. They're really good. Uh, they burn really smooth. We have uh, the best shredders on the market. Um, we've got a shredder that's a, a shredder and a de-simmer that can shred three pounds in uh, six seconds. And then we also offer packaging for your for your joints when you're ready to, to package them up. We have another machine that does uh, 300 at a time. You're, you're looking at it. You can make about 30,000 joints in a day with that machine. My name is Jeff Messi. I work for Dutch Pro Nutrients out of Amsterdam. I grew up here from Spokane. Uh, with our product, what we do is we sell nutrients to cannabis and hemp farmers. Uh, what sets our product apart is we're based on the law of the minimum. So you're going to get, it's a science-based, you need 17 micro and macronutrients to take full advantage of those of the potential of the plant. What I mean by that is uh, Liebig, he was a, a 19th century scientist, uh, determined you need 17 macro and micronutrients to, for the plant to fully take advantage of its genetics. If you have even a little bit less than the minimum that plant needs, you're not going to take advantage of that. So you may have a good product, but it could be better because you're not getting the full minimum of the nutrient that the plant requires. Our lineup is the only nutrient company that is based on that law of the minimum. We're free of heavy metals. We're not salt-based. We're mineral-based. So you're not going to have the residue or anything like that left over when it comes to after you've ran the product. And the best part is we've only got five products that you need to use for your entire cycle of your grow. You don't have to flush as well when it comes to after you've gone through the cycle. You just can keep that reinvigorated soil right there. Uh, www.dutchpro.com. My name is Nicholas Sizemore. I'm with Cultivate. Uh, Basically what we provide is bud tender training and cannabis business services for the industry. So basically we train people right off the street. Uh, We train people in the industry that are already in there working with retail stores. uh, And we provide them education, much needed education uh, for the industry, right? So one thing that the industry is kind of plagued with is misinformation and and lack of information just because this is such a new, new thing. I mean, we've had it here in Washington for 15 plus years medical a little bit of uh, recreational now for the last five years and yet there's so much anecdotal you know information but it's not solidified so what we're trying to do is provide a good retail space for people when they come in off the street when folks come in off the street they get good service basically good uh customer service good education on what these products can do for them what they can and can't do and then kind of we train the bud tenders uh, or at least as we call them cannabis educators what they can say and what they can't say because we're not doctors we're not trained professionals uh, medical professionals so we can't say certain things uh and then we also provide on the other side of that uh, we we provide cannabis services for um Producers, processors, retailers. So it's a suite of stuff when it comes to uh, digital marketing, branding, uh, websites, the whole shebang. We do it all. So we want to really just provide that new education for the industry because it's much, much needed. Right now we're located 1822 Broadway in Everett, Washington. um, And our website is www.cultivate101.com. My name is Baba Ali. I'm CEO of the Seattle Hemp Company. I should say proud CEO of the Seattle Hemp Company. Um, we're one of the new kids on the block in the space, so we just kicked off in September. Um, this is our first big show, and we are today distributors of CBD products. We don't manufacture our own. 
what we really identified in the marketplace as a strong, strong need was just to kind of be able to sift through a lot of like the nonsense products that are out there with 1,400 different brands versus like what's actually good, meaningful, quality products. And so we've launched with two brands right now that we trust the product that they produce, ultra, ultra high quality stuff that's coming out there. We go all the way back to where the, uh, uh, where the plant is grown. So all the products that we source are single origin, American grown hemp, have all like the triple lab test results, um, organic, non-GMO stuff. Uh, so really, really strong products with, you know, unique aspects to them as well. So we do the tinctures and topicals like a lot of other brands, uh, but then also things like kinesiology tape for different athletes, right? The first ever kinesiology tape was released by Arcanum. Kinesiology tape is essentially used to uh, kind of lift your skin up a little bit to help with blood flow and circulation and helps to relax the muscles as well. And this was the first ever CBD infused K-tape that's out in the market. Um, golfers use it, cyclists use it. Um, really, it could apply to a lot of different use cases if you're going through physical therapy, things like that. It's an amazing way to kind of supplement, say like a tincture, which is doing work on the inside of your body and bringing your body back into homeostasis, where the topicals and K-tape are really addressing the surface needs for it. There's K-tape that you can use on the back. There's also like different topicals and rubs that you can use on the back too. In fact, I tend to have back issues from time to time. I'm getting to that age. And so my go-to is definitely like the Arcanum Freeze product. It has a nice like cooling sensation to it. A product for every need because CBD can be used in so many different ways so effectively. www.theseattlehempco.com the easiest way to remember a Seattle Hemp Company, just give us a call, 833-206-HEMP. So my name is Eric Canale, and I uh, work for Royal Gold Potting Soils. We're here uh, in Tacoma, Canacon. And what we do right here is uh, you know, we import the raw cocoa fiber, and we uh, do a bunch of processing to that. So we hydrate it, wash it, grind it, rinse it, buffer it, as well as bagging. And that's in this bag right here. And then that's the base for all of our other mixes. So depending on your style of gardening, your method of watering, environmental controls, environmental conditions, we've got different products that will be better suited towards different applications. So whether that's you know gardening inside, uh, outside, in a greenhouse, hand watering, uh, automated, you know, scaled up for production. We kind of service all sorts of different customers. And we're based in Northern California, about five hours north of San Francisco, right on the coast. And you can find our products in hydroponic retail shops all over the country. So some of our products have uh, fertilizers mixed in, some kind of are lightly amended and some kind of are heavily amended. So depending on, uh, you know, if you're looking to have a longer uh, period where you just give it straight water and let those fertilizers kind of feed naturally and slowly, uh, we've got those. We've got some that'll just last for a couple weeks and then we also have some products that are completely inert so that you can kind of customize your feeding as needed. Our website is www.royalgoldsoil.com. So my name is Jordan Cummings. I'm with Green Med Lab. We have a few different products, but we make cannabis beverages, cannabis lubricants, and mixers. So we make Happy Apple, Atomic Apple, Major, uh, Utopia, and Velvet Swing. What makes our products unique is we make a uh, we turn our oil into a water-based emulsion, so that way it's very bioavailable for the body to break down. Yeah, our products are spread out through about 350 stores throughout the state, so you can find it just about everywhere. We started with our Velvet Swing line, which is our sexual lubricant, has THC and CBD. And from that, we branched off into beverages. Each beverage or each product has their own website. For Happy Apple, we have its own Instagram, own website at, at Happy Apple. Uh, our main company is Terrakino. So, terrakino.com is how you can reach all of our products, or greenmedlab.com. So, my name is Alec. I work at Sound Horticulture. We sell biocontrol organisms and natural pest controls. Biocontrols are awesome because they don't have re-entry intervals. They control pests Would you explain re-entry intervals to the listener? Yes. So a re-entry interval is the minimum amount of time required to pass before you can re-enter a room that's been treated with a pesticide. Oh. And this is for worker safety. Okay. So a huge benefit to using biocontrols is worker safety. When you're spraying pesticides, even organic ones like pyrethrins, those still have the potential for negative health impacts. Especially when they're sprayed on buds late in flower, there's really hasn't been a lot of studies done on what happens when they're combusted. It's, it's hard to know that even if those products are labeled and registered for cannabis, 
to know that those are safe for consumption. So we do still sell organic pesticides like pyrethrins, but we just advise people to use them safely and not near the end of harvest. Right. But you have other controls that you recommend, and yes. those are? Uh, so biocontrols like um, Aphidius colmani are a parasitic wasp, and they will lay their egg inside of an aphid. That egg will hatch, and then the larva will develop inside the aphid, eating it from the inside out, and eventually emerge as a full-grown adult. We have what's called entomopathogenic fungi. It's one of my favorite words to say. And basically, you're spraying fungal spores. So it, it, it's, you treat it like you would a pesticide. You know, you put your PPE on, your proper protective equipment. The fungus, the spores of the fungus attach to the insect cuticle, so its skin, basically. Oh, wow. And then the fungus germinates into the insect. So we're talking biological warfare. We are, yeah, yeah, biological warfare. There's even evidence to show that some of the predatory mites that we sell are able to carry spores of these entomopathogenic fungi to the pest population centers. The predatory mites, they, they eat these pests, so they're taking the spores directly where they need to be to infect the pests. Our website is soundhorticulture.com. Grandma Cat, tell us why you're here and uh, what you're seeing here at Canacon today. Well, I attended every Canacon in Seattle now and a couple uh, throughout the United States, and it's been an interesting evolution just across these very short few years, um, both in terms of the characteristic of attendees, the vendors, and the size of the event as well. You know, Washington being among those that went first, along with Colorado, you know, we had that huge green rush in which it was everything, cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. By by comparison, this year and through the years intervening, um, I've noticed that we're more about the picks and shovels, if you think in a gold rush mentality. We've got more people here with cash counting procedures, and security is important. We're seeing less greenhouses and seeds and fertilizer, and more of the mechanics associated with any other type of brick-and-mortar business and preserving your assets. But do you think the industry is pretty much dialed in and all of the, on all of the other stuff like fertilizers and the greenhouses and all that? And then do you think what is here is really what the industry needs right now? Well, certainly the, the vending that I'm seeing here reflects the maturity of the market. It's not quite the, the green, green west that we were originally. Um, there, is, there is a more understated uh, temperature to everything. And that even includes uh, the seminars, which I've noticed are by and large about business management, um, as opposed to any types of growing growing seminars. Or here's how you get started with your capital. Face it, we've pr pretty much run out of capital in Washington, and the state won't let uh, foreign investors, meaning out of state, invest in Washington, although it hasn't kept a few from doing so. Um, and nonetheless, you know, we've kind of been through that uh, growth, and now Canacon as an organization does better in some of the larger uh, eastern states that are coming on board with legalization and or medical. Um, right now, I think Oklahoma is one of the sites that is just on fire. They actually have one of the most libertarian laws out there around cannabis, which is shocking for me as a former Oklahoma resident. Uh, when I left that state in the mid-70s, it was still a dry-for-alcohol state. Right. And they only uh, put alcohol laws in, I believe, in the 1990s. Um, it's shocking to see the way that cannabis um, has gotten a foothold through, I think, the, the libertarian and the um, uh, religious communities as well. They are leaning heavily into Genesis 1, I think it's 16 or 13 or maybe all of it in between. Um, in which, you know, our, their Lord says the plant is for them to use. And we're seeing this in some of our th southern states that, uh, much like gay marriage, where um, religion was both our greatest foe and sometimes our greatest ally, we're seeing the same thing in cannabis. It's merely another social equality issue that has to go through all of the steps that we go through to get equity. 
hopefully we will find it. And so how can people get in touch with Grandma Cat, and uh, what are you doing in the cannabis industry these days? Well, I'm pretty ticked off at legalization. Turns out that wasn't really what we wanted. What we were asking for was freedom, but so many of our people were being incarcerated, and so in our persecution and prosecution, uh, we were asking for freedom, and it was the wrong thing. I'm back to fighting for freedom nowadays, and you can always find me at Grandma Cat on Facebook, Grandma Cat WA for Washington on Instagram, or Grandma Cat Jeter at Gmail. Well, Grandma Cat, I have a question for you. So you talked about how legalization may not have turned out to be our best friend, that what you're for is freedom. Can you please, because people are listening and they may not... If I don't know exactly, they probably don't know exactly. What is the difference? Oh, I can think of a, a, a thousand different differences. But personally, I was one of the pioneers in Washington Medical Cannabis, built one of the most reputable firms in this state, yet we were built around compassion and giving cannabis away to suffering people, especially children. Um, and... I wasn't allowed to do that under the legal system. I could no longer give away compassionate cannabis. So you weren't free in that sense. I was not free in that sense. How can we have cannabis freedom when a good friend of mine was the last um, case undertaken in the state of Washington by the Department of Justice, and he's now only four years into a 10-year term at Sheridan, Oregon, even as Washington is pushed through not just medical, and by the way, he was operating under the state law. It's just it was when the feds were still making runs at us trying to break right. up medical um, right. early states. Um, he's still got six more years to run. How can that be freedom? Well, you kind of sound like you're on the same page as I am in terms of anti-capitalist. Right, right, yeah. We, we're yeah. definitely due for a, a reset of economic justice in this country. The minute there was any type of safety, capital would emerge within the system and be ready to essentially eat our lunches. Sadly, it's also often complicit with the state governments, which are saying, we're giving you legalization. What more do you want? Yeah. Well, we'd like a little equity. Thank you, please. And we'd like to know that there aren't still a 100 different... I'll say BS rules, um, yeah. around a plant that could not hurt you unless a four-ton bale of it fell on you. <laughs> My name is Craig Stoller. The name of the product is Skunk Scrubber. Skunk Scrubber used a patented polymer that we developed. We've been in the pet and home products industry for the last couple of years with a brand called Nonsense. We have the number one selling cat litter deodorizer on Amazon, the number one selling refrigerator and shoe deodorizer. We have over 2,000 reviews with four and a half stars. Today, this is a brand new brand, a brand new line that we're launching called Skunk Scrubber. We're using the same technology for cannabis odor control. This is to help deal with the neighbors. A, a lot of people have, um, they're growing in, in um, locations where they have neighbor issues or if there's any regulatory issues where they need to keep their odor down. This is a product that's designed to deal with that. We don't use any fragrance or perfumes, so we don't mask the odor. We actually eliminate the odor and, and just completely remove it. Skunkscrubber.com. My name is Griselda, and I'm from California. I'm here with Dynagirl Nutrients. We have been around in this industry for over 30 years. Our products are very popular, specifically our ProTech. Our neem oil is very well known as well. Every single grower that I talk to, they always use our ProTech or our KLM. Our products are definitely designed for cannabis, like our Foliage Pro is, but our grow and our bloom are very versatile, so you can use them in your greenhouse for any type of indoor or outdoor plants. Everything is for a different stage. We have anything from rooting, from the vegetative growth, for the bloom, and then we also have water adjusters for your pH up or down or for your cleanser for the end. Mike from Marijuana Venture Magazine. We're based out of Seattle, Washington. Marijuana Venture is a 100% business-to-business focused magazine. We've been based out of Seattle for six years now, 100% focused on business. So what we do is reach all the licensed business owners across the country, all the retailers, processors, producers, basically anyone that has a license. And we're in all 50 states across the country in Barnes & Noble. Most folks that are looking to pick up our publication are looking to either get involved in some kind of capacity, whether it's retail, design, Anything with business, uh, that's really been our focus and in, in our, in our niche for the past okay. six years. www.marijuanaventure.com Dominion Organics, our organic nutrient line. 
we work with a lot of growers. Like, we have some Meraki gardens out of Portland. They're getting, like, 3.85. I guess this would be a number of people interested. Pounds of light. And so, yeah, they're doing real well. Brought in some canopy shots. They also just got testing of up to 35.9% THC on a strain. So our kind of spiel is we can get you good yields and a high THC content as well. Uh, a lot of organics, you're going to lose the yield. At DominionOrganics.com. Yeah, hey, we were happy to run into Sean Denae with Washington Bud Company. And uh, she is a producer here in uh, Washington in the 502 industry and produces some uh, great cannabis in the industry. And uh, she's just going to tell us uh, a little bit about why she is here and what she is doing here today. What does she find fascinating about Canacon this year? Yeah, well, um, Canacon asked me to speak this year, so uh, that's what brought me here earlier today. I'm the uh, chair of the Washington State Cannabis Commission Action Committee, and we are very excited to be introducing new legislation this year to form a cannabis commission so that we can have the research that we need. You know, this is an ancient plant, but it has so little research on how to best grow it, how to safely process it. You know, uh, commissions were established to help the small farmers uh, better thrive. And uh, once we get the cannabis commission established, it will not only be set up to, to fund research, uh, so a farmer, for example, says, you know, I have a theory that this this fertilizer versus this th- fertilizer will help uh, my terpene production, for example. Right? Well, let's research that. And then we can patent that research. And the research will be owned by all the farmers in Washington State of cannabis. Um, you know, I, I think one of the first things that the Cannabis Commission should do is, is tackle those action levels for those pesticides, right? So Washington Bud Company was the very first flower company in the state to voluntarily test for pesticides and heavy metals. We've been growing cannabis for a long, long time. We got busted in the 80s, in fact. Um, But, you know, a lot of people haven't had the motivation to figure out how to grow clean cannabis. I have Lyme disease, and uh, back in 2010, when when we started growing in Washington again, I was juicing the leaves to help uh, treat my Lyme disease. And uh, so the guys had to learn how to grow it clean because I wasn't going to put it in my blender. And, uh, and we brought those clean practices over into 502 and have greatly improved upon them. Growing clean, smoking clean, uh, you know, I don't care if people smoke for pleasure or for purpose, they should be uh, afforded clean cannabis no matter where they're getting it from. And so I'm a real proponent of that. And I think the uh, Washington State Cannabis Commission can help further that and be established to where when federal laws do allow us to have interstate commerce, the commission can be there to support and promote Washington-grown cannabis, just like it does Washington-grown apples, Washington-grown hops, Washington-grown wine grapes. Um, the, the cannabis commissions in Washington State have put... Washington on the global map for our agricultural products. Do you have a website? We do, wabudco.com. Yeah, yeah, you can find out about us at wabudco.com. Yeah, we're real, we're real proud of what we do. We're a, we're a small grower, we're a family grower. It's, it's me and my husband and my son, and, and then we hire, uh, we've got 12 other people on our crew. So when people purchase Washington Bud Company products, they're supporting 10 households. And we really, really appreciate that. Support your local small farmers. That's right.